Okay, so you can see we're going to be listening to a video. You know who, because it's on the title. And you know for what reason. So, I hope I'm looking at the camera when I look like this, because I keep looking at myself on the, on the monitor, because, you know, your eyes are drawn to a human face, right? I'll try to look at the camera instead. Uh, I hadn't wanted to return to the False Prophet series just yet, but this person forced my hand with their last video. They're one of the, what I'm calling, pre-trib pre rapture lunatics. And I'm only calling this not because they believe in the pre-trib rapture, but because they believe in the pre-trib rapture is necessary for salvation. Yeah, they've added that onto the gospel. Doesn't appear anywhere in scripture. There's no, no scripture that talks about pre-trib rapture. It talks about the gathering of the saints. It talks about it being like rapturing, which is a seizing unexpectedly. But there's nothing that says that it's pre-trib in nature. There's nothing anywhere in Scripture. I've challenged them to do it. I mean, not her in particular. But I've challenged these people to do this, to prove to me where it is. Best they could come up with was Revelation 3.10. And you've heard what I had to say about that in the video I made at the hotel. So, all right. And you get a surprise here on Revelation 4 through 6, uh, 20. Revelation 20, 4 through 6, have a preview of it. That puts the nail in the coffin. There is no pre-trib rapture. It's absolutely impossible. Yep, yeah, that is what proves it. Without a shadow of a doubt, there's no way to wiggle your way out of it that time. All right, so let's get on with this. Um, Andrea, child of the Most High, I've held off on um, judging her and her prophecies just to see, I felt like she was like pushing close to the boundaries, close to the fence, and um, I just wanted to wait and see. You know, does she cross that border, or does she stay back? You know, with the gospel of Christ, and with this pre-trib rapture stuff, that pushed her over, and now she's gone much further, much further, because her heart is set against those. Who are set against the pre-trib rapture. She's exalted pre-trib rapture above Jesus and above the Bible. Absolutely. No matter how much she may think that she reveres the Bible and reveres the Jesus of the Bible, she doesn't anymore. She's raised pre-trib rapture above that because that's a requirement. And if you don't believe in that, well, it's too bad, she says. You'll hear it in this video. Oh, it's too bad. You're going to have to go through the tribulation, you know, because you don't believe. All the rest of us are going to be saved by Jesus. Yeah? Watch. And uh, Disciple Robert has done the same thing. That's who I'm labeling lunatics, because they've lost it. They don't understand, they don't, they no longer see Jesus, if they did before, I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with video. We'll walk through it step by step, like, like always, with each one of the prophets that we test and we evaluate. So far, we haven't found any of the prophets that have been suggested to us as being true prophets. Okay? And the main reason is because they operate outside of the body of Christ. They operate outside of the leadership structure. So they're, they're not submitting themselves to the leaders in the church who are evaluating prophets. So over here, you cannot prophesy in the church. You're not allowed to unless you are tested and you are tested as a prophet and if you're found to be a false prophet of course you're not allowed to prophesy in the church so only those who pass the test are allowed to prophesy in the church and that's how it should be now prophets there are many 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 prophets out there and they have egos that have puffed them up themselves up thinking they have the Holy Spirit and teachers don't and preachers don't and no one else in the church does except those who might listen to them they oh yeah well we'll see if they if they approve of what I say then they have the Spirit but if they don't then they don't have the Spirit because I have the Spirit of God and no one else has it okay that's how they operate and you'll hear it here she says unequivocally 
that that is the case with her and no one can tell her anything differently. And she said this many times in that way. No one can tell me any di different. So don't even try because I know God because I know God. What? And you don't? You're the only one who knows God? Woman, get back in your place. That's the other problem that we're going to address. We'll hit it right now. Here we go. And there it is. There she is with her open mouth. Let's see if I can go back a little bit. And okay, all right. Here we go. Okay, good morning, everybody. Today is July the 1st, 2021. I have a beautiful, exciting dream to be able to tell those of us who are waiting and watching. Okay, being fit. All right, listen to the tone of voice. It's the. <sighs> It's the tone of someone who's injured, who's injured in their ego. And you'll hear uh, some other times in the video, I'll stop and draw attention to it. Uh, when someone uses these tones of voice, it's from ego and in, uh, injury, okay? She's very excited about this video. And the reason is because this spirit that is speaking to her has finally come out with who it is with its orientation and is not towards God of the Bible. It is toward a God. It is towards a set of gods, but it's not the God of the Bible. And we'll find that out here as we go. All right, here we go. And watching for the Lord to um, take us out of here, okay? So notice the emphasis is, is not on fulfilling the gospel uh, pleasing the Father. It's on faithfully waiting and watching for the Lord to take us out of here. It's escape. And this is why I say that these prophets are preaching peace and safety. And she's swearing in this one, you'll hear it, that they must be speaking the truth because they're preaching doom and gloom. And so that proves that they're preaching the truth. But that's in fact not what they're preaching anyway. But that doesn't prove whether it's true or not. That doesn't prove it. Preaching gloom, doom and gloom, does not prove that what you're preaching is true. There have been many false preachers who set dates of destruction, and that's gloom and doom. And they're absolutely 100% false prophets. So that's not the test. The test is whether they preach rapture or not is not the test either. Because there are many, for example, most of our false prophets have preached the pre-trib rapture and they set a date and they set a date and they set a date and the dates come and go and they come and go and they come and go and they keep doing it. Brenda Weltner is one of the most prolific ones. Harold Camping, super famous one. I think he set two dates. So just because you preach pre-trib rapture doesn't make you a true prophet. Just because you preach gloom and doom doesn't make you a true prophet. Many false prophets have preached both of those. That doesn't make you a true prophet. And now that you're tacking on belief in the pre-trib rapture in particular as a requirement to be saved by Jesus, which is not in the gospel, which is not even in the Bible, and it's not a requirement for salvation anywhere, this means you are a false teacher. You are a false teacher. Let's keep going. Um, I shared this dream this morning with a few people uh, and I um, I didn't tell them all the details, but I'm going to tell you all the details. Okay, so the dream started off that I was inside my home. Not this house that I have, but I, my home. In the dream, it was my home. And the and, and in the house, um, I guess I was pretty impressed with the sturdiness of it because it seemed to be built out of I had like steel beams and the rafters were like steel beams, not like wood where they'd snap or something. It was like steel beams. Um, the walls of the house were thin pieces of wood, though, and. Um, 
Okay, so what happened was all of a sudden there was an earthquake. I had to check the volumes to make sure that um, the readings were showing that the volume on that video was too high, but it's okay. Now. So there was an earthquake. Uh, um, okay, the damage that was done inside my house was like I had my car. Okay, like here was a kitchen on this side of the wall and on this side of the wall there was a closet for my bedroom and like there was like uh, normally when you have a wall uh, you have one set of uh, what are they called well, not trusses the trusses go in the roof uh, I don't know you have um, your yeah, trust us, because the rafters are in the roof. All right, so I, ha I had all these, uh, you know, the pieces of wood, the lumber that goes and separates, uh, like every four, uh, fourteen inches, sixteen inches on center, something like that, to make your wall. Okay, the partition of your wall, where the drywall goes on each side. So, okay, so there's a kitchen on this side, a bathroom on this side, but there was two of these uh, pieces of. Uh, wood. I don't know how to explain it. I'm sorry. I'm just trying my best. Just trying my best. Okay, so when the earthquake happened, it split like this. Boom. But it split really, really, really big. Like, uh, I would say about the width of my car. So my car is probably about almost five feet wide or a little about five feet wide, something like that. That's the, the let me ask this question. Why are all these details important? What is the point of, of trying to get exactly how far apart it is? It's the width of a car. Who cares if it's five feet, six feet, or seven feet? It's the width of a car. Why spend this time on that? We're trying to figure out what exactly the word is of, of the studs in, in the walls. What's the point? I'll tell you what the point is. It's sensory overload. You know, if they tell enough details, then you'll believe it. They tell enough details, it sounds realistic, and you'll think, oh, this this is realistic. This has got to be a dream from the Lord. You know, this has to be something that's real, right? That's the point. That's why they go into great detail over these things. Don't be fooled by it. Don't be fooled. Don't be overloaded, sensory overload. If they start going into great detail, just skip over it. You know, in fact, that's what I did when I first watched the video. Oh, details again. You know, skip, skip, skip. Okay, let's listen, listen. More details. Skip, 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 skip. And it was just, it was unbearable. So, and you know, when, when someone is lying, they go into greater detail, not less detail. And the reason is the same thing. Now, I don't, I don't know if she's doing this on purpose. I don't know. Because I don't know what's happened in her heart. I mean, something has led her astray. So I don't know if it's conscious or if it's not. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt and say it's unconscious. That she's not purposely doing this. But I can't say that. I don't know. So, at any rate, for some reason, either because of her or the spirit who is leading her, She's going into greater detail in order to try to convince you that what she's saying is real. That's what liars do. When they want to convince you that they're telling the truth, they think that the more detail they give, the more honest they sound. But you know, like here in Ukraine, you try to explain yourself, even if you're like telling the truth and you're trying to, and you know, here's a guy who's lying here, you're telling the truth. He knows that if he tells more detail here in Ukraine, no one will believe him. So he's just like, you know, yeah, whatever. But the guy who's telling the truth who's from the West is going to go into detail, right? And it's like, okay, hold on a minute. You know, you don't realize that that really is the mark of a liar, going into this great detail of, of oh, it was exactly five inches this way and two inches this way. It was brown here and it was green here. And, you know, no, 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 no. Especially details that don't matter. Those are diversions. Those are to try to overwhelm your senses in your imagination, right? So then you start to imagine it enough details, you start to think it's real. It's got to be real. Too many details. It's got to be real. No, that's not how. No. All right, let's keep going. All right. 
or the inside of my car. Okay, it's wider than that, but I'm just saying the inside of my car. So we'll say about five feet. So the um, the wall split open about five feet and separated, you know, and then it, it opened up and then I could see my closet was right there and, you know, I saw my kitchen and everything and I was looking at the damage done to the house. And then, okay, the scene changed and my dad had been building me this massive, massive home. Each Okay, no, you know, nor, you normally have concrete blocks will make up a house. Concrete blocks, you know, the size of a concrete block. The blocks that he was making my home with was massive. Each concrete block, each, it wasn't even made of concrete. It was made of stone. It was like chiseled stone, perfectly chiseled and etched. Perfect. Keep this in mind. I want you to remember this as we get further along. This, she said, she said it wasn't even concrete. Now, first she says it's concrete blocks. Then she says it wasn't even concrete. Well, hold on. It was her dream. Either it was concrete or it wasn't concrete. And if it wasn't concrete, why are you saying it was concrete? And now you're saying it wasn't concrete. It was actually stone. Those are completely different things. And, you, and you know, the average person is saying, hold on, concrete is stone. No, it's not. Concrete is a mixture this made that hardens up that looks kind of like stone but it's not if you look close enough it, you can see the you know corrugation and, and that is some sort of mixture of you know a little bit of gravel a little bit of powder you know that's a little bit of water and then it hardens up it's not stone but keep this in mind she said huge blocks of stone there is something that connects directly with that in here that points to other gods. Mark my words. Chiseled and etched. Perfectly chiseled and etched. The making my home with was massive. Massive. You normally have concrete blocks will make up a house. Concrete blocks, you know the size of a concrete block. The blocks that he was making my home with was massive. Each concrete block, each, it wasn't even made of concrete. It was made of stone. It was like... Tell me why she's expressing herself so emotionally about this. Watch her eyes, right? Massive. It's a dream. It's a dream. She thinks it was a dream given by God. And that this, who is her father, is representing God. Her human father represents God to her in her dreams. You'll hear that in other dreams as well, if you've ever listened to them. I'm not advocating going and listening to them, because after this video is finished, you're going to hear that she's a false prophet. That means you need to stay away from her. Don't listen to her anymore. If you do, that means that you're sharing in her punishment. You're not supposed to do that. And if you go to that video in the, in the False Prophet playlist on my channel here, and the first video goes through Deuteronomy and the teaching of the evaluation of false prophets and the judgment. So that's where it says it. We're not to hearken unto them anymore, and we're to stone them to death, which means we don't stone to death now, but we're to treat them as if they're dead in regards to the community of Christ. Let's finish listening to her delusion. Chisel, it was each, each concrete block, each, it wasn't even made of concrete. It was made of stone. It was like chiseled stone. Oh, we missed uh, the emotional part here. Massive, massive home. Each, okay, no, you know, nor, you normally have concrete blocks will make up a house. Concrete blocks, you know, the size of a concrete block. The blocks that he was making my home with was massive. See that she even like massive on her heart. Why? She's trying to convince you emotionally. So don't be manipulated. She's trying to convince you emotionally. And you'll see that towards the end of the video, even not at the end, she starts into this kind of, you know, rallying type of speaking, you know, trying to imitate preachers who are 
or trying to stir people up and their emotions. Right? Be careful. Very manipulative. Let's keep going. Concrete block. Each it wasn't even made of concrete. It was made of stone. So now she reveals she was lying because she said that they were concrete blocks. Now she says they weren't even made of concrete. They weren't even made of concrete. The even is to try to conceal the lie that she just did on you. Because first she says it's a concrete block, then she swaps it out and says it's a stone block, but puts the even in there. You know, because really it's not even. The correct word for that is uh, it wasn't concrete blocks, but rather stone. Or instead, it was stone. You know, or something this contrasting. But even is like stepping it up a little bit more. But that's not what happened. She just lied to you. She's been telling you it was concrete blocks, concrete blocks, concrete blocks. Oh, uh, sorry, it wasn't concrete blocks. It was stone. So she's trying to divert your attention away from the fact that they were stone, because that is one of the signifying features. I'll show you as we get along here. Because they're massive stone work, massive stone blocks that this massive building that she calls her house is made out of. Okay? It was like chiseled stone, perfectly chiseled, chiseled. and etched, perfect she said it herself. It's chiseled stone. Perfectly etched chiseled stone. That is important. That is extremely important. Because houses are not made that way. Okay, let's watch. I'm talking about like ever made that way. There's there are exceptions where some palaces and you know things like that. Buildings, yes. But a house, no. Cornered perfect stone the stones was about five feet wide I would say about four and a half to five feet wide and probably about I don't know three feet this way you know it's so like three feet this way and about five feet or so about four and a half to five feet this way okay that's how big each stone was this home that he was building me it was exquisite and even he why is she like, mm, oh, mm, it's a dream. Even if it were a dream from God, it's still just a dream. You're not there yet. But this isn't from God. And you'll see, you'll see by a name that she reveals for herself. Let's keep going. At the end of each, uh, like when you're coming up the porch, when you're coming up the steps to come into the home, uh, you can have these big, huge planters. You've seen these big concrete planters. Let me tell you something. The size of them suckers was massive. They are beautiful. The size of them what? It's just, you know, all of this evidence that something has gone wrong inside of her, this corrupting her inside. Let's keep going. Planners, let me tell you something. The size of them suckers was massive. They were beautiful. And he placed the last stone. I was watching him place the last stone in place for the for the for the outs. He'd finished the whole place. He'd finished my whole home. And he was placing the last block. Well, look at the emotion. It's like these false preachers, these uh, scam artists who go around preaching in tent meetings who try to stir the emotion up and mm, oh like you know you can name a dozen of them who are televangelists who do exactly what she's doing she must be watching these shows now because she's like she's like imitating them so much but then again she is listening to some other spirit at this point and you'll see because she names a name which is very telling it's why I had to make this video today. I was on the planter and I looked at it and I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. Why is she so excited? About what? Because she thinks that this is from God and is telling about something that is there waiting for her in heaven? That's why? No, that's not why. She's doing this to make you believe her. That's what she's doing. 
and shall call me a mocker and a scoffer. Mockers and scoffers in the scripture are those who are mocking and scoffing, saying that that Christ will never return. And I'm not saying that myself at all. In fact, I tell you to be ready. They tell you to watch or watch and be ready. And I say, no, it doesn't say watch, it says stay awake. Because you can be asleep watching. You can. You can be spiritually sleeping and watching. But you're not required to watch in order to go with the Lord. You are required to be ready because in the story of the virgins, all ten of them were asleep, like physically asleep. And yet when the bridegroom came, those five that were still there, not going and getting oil that they didn't get in order to be ready, those five who were still there, who were ready, went. The other five who were off trying to repair their own foolishness of not being ready didn't get to go. So, I'll try to put the video for that up here. I've done that long ago, actually. So, it's actually, I don't know if she realizes how offensive it is to see this manipulation so, like, overt. <laughs> it's like cringe. You know what I mean? It's cringe. The televangelists do it. And when you watch you know, Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, you know, all these guys. It's cringe when you're watching it. And it's the same way here. She's imitating them. I don't think she's imitating them on purpose. I think she's picked it up, like, on the side. Let's go ahead and watch some more. It was hard for me to watch this. And she'll say, yeah, of course it was hard because it's the truth. And you don't believe in the truth. No. It's hard for me to watch it because I know the truth. And I know manipulation when I hear it, and I feel it, and I see it. All these signs of dra dramatizing something that, why would you dramatize it? Except to manipulate people. It's the same with the movies about the pre-trib rapture. I was just reviewing some from the 70s and 80s. Thief in the Night, and this, this quadrilogy, they made four of them. And it, they, they purposely took elements from science fiction and horror and made a Christian movie from it to shock people. The shock value is what they wanted to get. And and they will claim, well, you know, people came and accepted Jesus because of it and became Christians. Did they really? No, they didn't. They started claiming they were Christians. That doesn't mean that they knew Christ. What were you preaching to them? You weren't preaching the gospel. You were preaching fear. And then peace and safety. Fear, peace, and safety. No, that's not the gospel. Let's keep listening. Was the, on the planter, and I looked at it, and I was like, wow. He put a block on the planter. What? Like on top of the planter? Or under the planter? Or what? I listened to that like three times. I'm like, all right, don't understand that at all. He put a block on the planter. Well, but the planter is for plants. You put a block on it, you can't put plants on it in it, or if there's plants in it, you're going to die. And she's sitting there going, wow. That's exactly how she looks. Wow. Unbelievable. All right. Manipulation. Manipulation. A little nonsensical. On the planter, and I will... The outs he'd finished the whole place he'd finished my whole home and he was placing the last block which was the, on the planter and I looked at it and I was like wow <laughs> yeah there's something wrong so the last block on the plant the block she said is like five feet wide and three feet high how big is this planter it's like you know 25 feet wide and 30 feet high so you put a block on it, it's like on the edge of it or something? I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Anyway, she's giddy. She's so giddy, it's like cuckoo. There's something wrong. Let's keep going. Okay. 
the scene changed. Cassandra was in my dream. Okay. Now, she speaks as if we should know who Cassandra is. Okay? I don't know who Cassandra is. Maybe it's a, a, a subscriber. I don't know. But it's important. It's important. Right? Especially when she starts to interpret this dream. And she tells everyone, you can't, you can't convince me that it means anything other than what I say. Because God told me, and you don't know God, you don't have the Holy Spirit. That's the implication. She doesn't say that, but that's the implication. I'm the only one with the Holy Spirit. And God told me, and if you think God told you, you're wrong. Because it's my dream. It's not her dream. If she believes it's from the Lord, it's not her dream. So why should she try to capitalize on who God speaks to, or can speak to, about the interpretation? See? All right, you'll, you'll see it. Now, um, I'm just going to tell you the dream, and then I'll go back and explain it. Cassandra. But Cassandra was in my dream. Uh, she just popped up, and she had this little tiny baby. Now, uh, the little tiny baby was hungry, tired, and worn out. Now, understand, the importance of Cassandra is not, I didn't give it that importance. She does in her interpretation. She does. Here we go. So there was a baby with Cassandra who was tired and hungry and worn out. Okay, so she was neglecting her baby. That's what it sounds like. This Cassandra was ne neglecting her baby. Tiny baby was hungry. By the way, speaking of hungry, I'm going to uh, drink some of my, it's not soda and it's not alcohol, of course. It's pine water. You see that? They sell pine water. It's water made with pine needles. There's no sugar or anything in it either. So. But it's very healthy. I was making tea from pine needles in uh, Los Angeles. It's good for eyesight. And so I was making that. And now here I find they have pine water over here. So I'm going to be drinking this while we listen to her. And I'll stop and just on it. I'm very dry. So pardon me. Now, uh, the little tiny baby was hungry, tired, and worn out. So Cassandra got on the phone and she was talking to her mother. She was telling her mother something and her mother didn't want to hear it. She didn't want to hear anything she had to say. So... Uh, Cassandra just said, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm just going to leave. Hmm. And she said, no, she says, I'm leaving. And then the mother said, well, I don't want nothing to do with that. And that was the end of the dream. Here's the interpretation. Without a doubt, it's not open for uh, you to have, you know, the Lord's put it, the Holy Spirit let me know what the interpretation is and that you can be sure of the interpretation. This is what it is. So, you hear it right there. I'm the only one with the direct line to the Holy Spirit. You don't have it, especially on my dream. Because the Holy Spirit gave me the interpretation and he would never give you the interpretation of my dream. Yep. Yeah. Let's listen again. So you get that attitude. Here's the interpretation. Without a doubt, it's not open for uh, you to have, you know, the Lord's put it. The it's not open for um, you to have a, a, a la, uh, she can't say it. Because she knows that if she says it directly, she, she knows that I'm going to watch her videos and I'm going to catch her in her lies. I'm going to catch her in her false prophesying. I'm going to catch her in her misleading people away from worshiping the God of the scriptures. So she's trying to cover it up by kind of half saying it so that you know just enough of the sentence so you know what she means without exactly saying the whole thing. This, this is again deceit. Okay? Now stuttering is one thing. But that's not what's going on here. Okay. Manipulation. And that was the end of the dream. Here's the interpretation. Without a doubt, it's not open. Without a doubt. Here's the interpretation without a doubt. Meaning, you're not allowed to doubt me. She's elevated herself above the Holy Spirit. Above God. 
Because she said, here's the interpretation. I'm going to give you the interpretation and you cannot doubt it. That's what it means. That's literally what that means. Here's the interpretation, I'm going to tell you, without a doubt. And she adds on to it, you can't say anything about this. You're not allowed to say anything about this. Listen. Nothing to do with that. And that was the end of the dream. Here's the interpretation. Without a doubt, it's not open for... Uh, you to have, you know, the Lord's put it, the Holy Spirit let me know what the interpretation is and that you can be assured of the interpretation. And you can be assured of the interpretation. Why? Why should we be assured of the interpretation? How do we know that this is the interpretation? You claim that the Holy Spirit revealed it to you, but hey, how do we know? How do we know that the Holy Spirit revealed that to you? What if I'm sitting here and the Holy Spirit reveals a different interpretation to me of your dream? And you're saying, oh, you can be assured the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. And I know the Holy Spirit revealed something different to me about your dream. Does that mean that you're saying that no matter what anyone thinks the Holy Spirit may have revealed to them about your dream, that they're wrong and they're a liar? That's what it means. That's what it means when you say that and you do that. That's not being part of the body of Christ. That's not being part of the community of Christ. Because you don't recognize that other people have the Holy Spirit. You think you are the Pope. Really, infallible. It's the word. You act like you are infallible. That no one can tell you differently. I know God. I recognize a dream from God. I recognize an interpretation from God. I know his voice. I know his voice. I love him. And I know him. And you, know, you can't tell me different. And that implies that if you think differently, you don't recognize God's voice. You don't recognize an interpretation from God. You don't love God. Because if you loved God, then you would recognize his voice and recognize it's not him who's telling you that. And, and Andrea, I'm telling you that you. I think you did love Christ before, but you have allowed your heart to wander astray, which is what it says in Thessalonians. And God dispatches so that you will believe those from the light, those who are from the light. And that's what's happened, or is happening, is in the process. But actually, it's very close to being done. Okay, let's listen to some more of her shutting everyone else out. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit let me know what the interpretation is and that you can be sure of the interpretation. This is what it is. That's, uh, by the way, that's more of that emotional uh, ego hurt talk I was telling you about in the beginning. Okay. And so you, you can see it. It's like wearing it on your sleeve. Everyone can see it. Everyone can smell it. You know, it's like when you're around an old man and uh, he's peed his pants, you know, and he can't control himself. It's not his fault, right? It just is. It just is what it is. You can smell it. Everyone smells it. You know, it's the same when someone's been hurt in their ego. Is it, you know, they're hurt in their ego. They can't help expressing themselves this way. They can help being hurt in their ego, but they can't help expressing themselves out of that hurt. And so everyone smells it. You can smell it. You can see it. So uh, it's it's cringeworthy. It's hard to watch. It's hard to listen to. Uh, you know, the Lord's put it. The Holy Spirit let me know what the interpretation is, and that you can be sure of the interpretation. This is what it is. Okay, so the home that I was in, uh, there's an earthquake that's going to happen. It's it's going to happen. See this emotionalism about it to try to convince you. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Take my word. Because I'm God. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got a direct connection with God. You don't. Otherwise, you would know whether what I'm saying is true or false. So since you don't have a direct connection with God, that means she has to try to convince you to believe her. So that's the implication, is that she doesn't believe that you have a connection with God. Or can have a connection with God. 
So that's why she has to convince you to depend on her. Depend on her visions. Depend on her dreams. Depend on her interpretations. And she tries to take that control away from you to make you dependent on her. And then what happens is she starts to swap things out and lead you astray to other gods. And that's what we're going to see. Let's keep going. Okay, so the home that I was in, uh, there's an earthquake that's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. The um, home I was in, uh, I was pretty impressed with the sturdiness of it, but however, it still broke. My dad came and built and built me another magnificently huge home built. Why is she closing her eyes and pursing her lips and doing this with her hands? Why? It's exactly what televangelists do. Watch them. Go watch one, you know, just, just once. Go watch one and then watch a different one and another one, three of them. Watch three different evangelists, one time each. The whole thing. And you'll see them doing exactly what she's doing. Trying to manipulate you. Trying to convince you that what they're saying is true by trying to appeal to your emotions. Don't buy it. All right. Let's keep going. My dad came and built, and built me another magnificently huge home built with these massive, massive stones that were perfectly carved, perfectly carved. She says it again, so there's no doubt that in her dream, there were these massive, massive stones, not concrete, she makes a distinction, and that they were intricately carved, yet accurate and exact. Okay, keep that in mind. And Cassandra. He represented God the Father, okay? That's who he was. You have no choice but to believe her interpretation. You cannot have a different interpretation of her dreams. You cannot disbelieve her. Okay? Okay? The use of the word okay is, is fine, right? But in this context, the way that she's behaving is part of the manipulation. Let's keep going. Okay? Father has my mansion complete because I was watching him place the last stone the planter outside I was watching him do that and I see that she's acting like like her father was actually God she's saying listen again she uses the word actually and she's behaving emotionally like her father was actually physically God and that that thing in her dream was actually physically her mansion in heaven but Jesus never says that we will have our own mansions. He doesn't. Go back and read it. He doesn't say that. That were perfectly carved, perfectly cut. He represented God the Father. Okay? That's who he was. So God the Father has my mansion complete because I was watching him place the last stone, the planter outside. I was watching him do that and I was so impressed. I thought it was so amazing. And I watched, oh my gosh, that's right. I looked at how he placed the stone. It was absolutely perfect. I mean, it was perfect. It was precisionly, with precision, it was put down exactly. Was it one, one, was it too far on this side or too far on this? I was. The reason she's saying that is to try to it, it's an association, word association that happens. Now remember that I was a linguist, right? An analyst in the military. I was trained that way from the time I was 17 years old. And my entire life of the Lord training me and raising me up for what I'm doing now in the church was through linguistics, uh, analysis of, of language use, all kinds of things like this, okay? Leading writers groups, you know, I mean, I can go on and on. Radio announcer on the Christian radio station, you know, public speaker, um, all kinds of things where it's about language and communication. And so as an analyst, I listen very closely and I watch what are they trying to communicate with this or do with this because they don't always communicate what they're trying to do. And most of the time, especially when you get into areas like this, they're trying to do something other than what they're trying to communicate. But in this case, talking about a precision stonework and it's precise in the last one, blah, blah, blah. 
This idea of precision is to try to get you to believe that she's being precise and that what she's saying is exactly true syllable for syllable. It's this kind of uh, metaphor and comparison that is implied. So, And she has actually said that earlier. We drew t attention to it. You cannot tell me an interpretation because the Holy Spirit told me himself and you can bet your bottom dollar on this. I guarantee you that this interpretation is correct. And now she's talking about accuracy and precision, you know, as the last stone is put on in order to keep building this kind of imagery that what she's saying is accurate and precise. Okay? <laughs> Be careful. Be perfect. I mean, it was perfect. It was precisionly, with precision, it was just absolute. I was watching him do that, and I was so impressed. I thought it was so amazing. And I watched, oh my gosh, that's right. I looked at how he placed the stone. It was absolutely perfect. I mean, it was perfect. It was precisionly, with precision, it was put down exactly. Was it, one, one, was it too far on this side or too far on this side? I was pre precision perfect. And I was so impressed. Eight times. Eight times she uses language that conveys precision, perfect, exact. Eight times. You saw me counting. Eight times. In like a couple seconds. Now tell me she's not barraging you with this concept. Now I don't think that she's doing this like consciously. I think she's doing this intuitively. And she's, it's a manipulation. Manipulation, absolutely. With precision. I watched, oh my gosh, that's right. I looked at how he placed the stone. It was absolutely perfect. I mean, it was perfect. It was precisionly, with precision, it was put down exactly. Was it, one, one, was it too far on this side or too far on this side? I was pre precision perfect. And I was so impressed. I was so impressed. I thought, how beautiful. She's going to cry now. Really? Andrea, don't do that. Come on. Saint, when the scene changed, Cassandra popped up in the dream. Let me tell you, the meaning of the name Cassandra means unheeded prophetess. Okay. She just said that. Listen to what she said. Unheeded prophetess. I thought she said heated, but it's heeded, like not listened to. Which means... She's a prophetess, but people are not listening. They're not listening. Unheeded. Now, she, she, she indicates that she is Cassandra. Okay, let's keep going. So it's a prophetess who people are not listening to. Okay. Keep it in mind. These details are very important, and I'm going to show you what she's doing. Okay. In the dream, she had the baby. The baby was tired, hungry, and worn out. That represented her spirit. Okay, so, and also, she's telling her mother something, I couldn't hear what she was telling her, but she was telling her mother something, and her mother didn't want to hear it, her mom didn't want to hear anything. So how could she hear, how could Andrea hear her mother, but not hear what Cassandra was saying? Cassandra was actually physically there. The mother wasn't. They were talking on the phone. I thought. Sit on the phone. Maybe not. She had to say. And then so Cassandra said, well, I'm leaving. And she says, well, I don't want nothing to do with that. What that represents is this. Those of us, I mean, I don't really like using the word, but it's a fact. If you've been, if you have been given a prophet, a prophecy or, you know, a prophecy to tell from the Lord that makes you either a prophet or a prophetess. Oh, well, she doesn't like using the word prophet. So she, but she's using the word prophet. <laughs> if she didn't like using it, she wouldn't use it. So she's lying to you. She's pretending to be humble. That's the game. Said, well, I don't really want to call myself a prophetess. You know, I don't like using that word, but I am a prophetess. I am Cassandra. Whoever gives a prophecy is a prophet or a prophetess. So elevate me. What's going on? Watch. I'll back up a little bit. You'll see that false humility. 
you'll see that lie. I don't like using the word prophet. Then why are you using it publicly on a YouTube video? You liar. You are a liar. If you didn't like using it, you wouldn't use it on the YouTube video in public. Too late. And if you try to delete this video like you did before tons of others of your videos, I've got it here. This is not online. You can't hide those this time. Don't really like using the word, but it's a fact. If you've been if you have been given a prophet a prophecy or you know a prophecy to tell from the Lord that of uh, you know, those of us. I mean, I don't really like using the, no, she this. Says those of us. So she's already associating herself as a prophet. And she says, those of us. To do with that. What that represents is this. Those of us. I mean, I don't really like using the word, but it's a fact. If you've been, if you have been given a prophet, a prophecy or, you know, a prophecy to tell from the Lord that makes you either a prophet or a prophetess. And that is the fact of it. Uh, so see. She does that again, trying to manipulate you and convince you that what she's saying is true. She says, and that is the fact of it. You can't argue with that because that is a fact. I called it a fact and therefore you can't argue with it. Yeah. Hmm? You can be a prophet or a prophetess and not be speaking from the Lord. That's biblical. So she's not only lying to you that she doesn't like to use the word prophet, but she's also lying to you because the scriptures say otherwise. She makes the definition that if you have a prophecy from the Lord, that makes you a prophet. It's not the only thing that makes you a prophet. We'll cut her a little slack because she didn't say only. Okay, let's keep going. Won't matter anyway. You know, a prophecy to tell from the Lord that makes you either a prophet or a prophetess. And that is the fact of it. Um, so, <laughs> Cassandra, um, oh, I'm just, I'm just like overwhelmed. This. Mm. Okay. There's the pride right there. She's overwhelmed at the title of being a prophetess. Oh, sorry, it's the microphone I just hit. She's overwhelmed. She says so. I'm overwhelmed. Right? Let's see. <laughs> Cassandra, um, oh, I'm just, I'm just like overwhelmed. This is like, this thing is like really going to happen. Notice she still uses that name, Cassandra to represent her. Because she said. That's the interpretation. I'm just like overwhelmed. This is like, this thing is like really going to happen. Okay, so, so the dream is meaning this about Cassandra. Those of us who have been given prophecies, uh, the prophets and prophetesses who have been given prophecies from the Lord. The baby represented this, our spirit. So she's automatically assuming that her prophecies are from the Lord and that the prophecies of certain other prophets and prophetesses are from the Lord. Okay? Now, take note that she has been supporting one of the false prophets that we identified at the beginning of our series that she knew about. She quit following her because it was it's absolutely crystal clear the woman has made multiple date settings of the return of the Lord that have not come to pass which exactly makes her a false prophet. She knew that. She understood that. She quit following her. That was correct. Now she's back with her. She's back with her, following her, promoting her. And now that's probably one of the prophetesses or prophets that she's talking about. And prophetesses who have been given prophecies from the Lord. It's an assumption. The baby represented this, our spirit. We are tired. We're hungry for the... Notice she says our spirit, not our spirits. Okay. 
we're tired, we're hungry for the Lord. Yeah, but who? Who is your Lord? Lord means master. You can only serve one master. Tired, we're hungry for the Lord. We're worn out. For the Lord. Exactly like those preachers. For the Lord. To try to emphasize like, oh, I'm sincere. I'm sincere. That's what they do. That's what they do. Do as I said. You know, I'm I'm giving you permission as a leader in the church to go watch three different of these televangelists one time each. Watch the whole thing through. And I want you to take note as you're doing it of all the kind of things they're doing to manipulate their audience. A quivering voice, like a shaking finger, like tapping on the table or, or whatever, or certain phrases they use. I want you to take note of those things. 